Hey, welcome guys. Welcome to TTL Media, Tim's Take Live. I'm your host, Tim Black. All right, so this story was sent to me by Shep Su. I can't do the rest of your last name, Shep Su, or your middle name, last name. I can't do it, man. This is a guy's name. All right. Shep Su hit me up on my discussion panel here on YouTube. Man, Shep Su, email me or message me. Dude, I can't be checking the discussion panel. He had a good, good story idea. Send it to me so I can't get it. All right, so here's the deal, guys. Um, first, oh, first, before I do the story, thank you for supporting my channel. Thank you for ordering my stuff. Thank you for getting a card, my Tim the Bartender card. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you guys. Thank you for ordering my T-shirts. I appreciate you. You know that what we do here is we tell the truth. This is my day job, my full-time job, ladies and gentlemen. This is what I do. I make content for the internet. I write and I do videos and I seek the truth. And I try to give it to you in an entertaining, realistic way. And I try to cut through mainstream media nonsense, bullshit, and slant. That's what I do. So if you like that, you like my mission, please help me out. Go to the links in the link description. We can't do this without you. Thank you for your participation. Those of you who cannot participate in giving, Please consider doing so at another time. You can also participate by sharing. <sighs> All right. I got a story for you guys. It's really one of those stories. Mm. It's one of those stories. Damn, it's good coffee. It's one of those stories that really get your motor going. All right. And I, what I want to do, what I want to do now is break down some barriers people have about Democrats, about Republicans, about Libertarians, about conservatives, about liberals. All right. Progressives. All this stuff, right? Rhinos, all this. There's a shop owner, a co-owner co of a shop in Portland, Oregon. His name is John Langley. John had a customer. This is what happened. He's at a cafe. The cafe is the red and black cafe in Portland, Oregon. It's sort of a co-op type thing. What they do is they help the community. They, they Anybody's welcome. You're homeless. Sick, tired, weary, come and get a sandwich, get a cup of coffee. No one's going to mess with you here. This is a sanctuary. They also provide housing on the upside of the house, on the, on, the, uh, on the different floors of the building, from my understanding. Something like that, right? So it's a community-based cafe at, at the true sense of the word, All right? Now, the, the co-owner of this cafe is an admitted anarchist. So this man believes in independence. He believes in God-given rights. He believes that the government only has the amount of authority that, that we allow them to have. They should have no more. Absolutely no more. Okay? So you with me now. So we understand what we're dealing with when we talk about the Red and Black Cafe in Portland, Oregon. So on this day, earlier this week, I think it was, maybe last week, in the last week, a customer comes up to John and says, John, someone's been in that bathroom way too long and the door's locked. So John tries to go in the bathroom. He can't, knocks on the door repeatedly. The door will not open. He goes and gets his key, gets in the door. He discovers a man in the bathroom, barely breathing, leaned up or laid out or whatever. So John goes and calls 911. And in this calling of 911, he tells the dispatcher, the man was barely breathing and he reported to the 911 as a medical emergency, but specifically, specifically, told the dispatcher that police officers were not allowed. He didn't want police officers in the cafe. Why? Why not? Why not? Why don't you want cops there? The dispatcher told him, hey, you get a jumbo pack. This is a, you can't take out pieces of the bonus pack we give you when we when you call you get paramedics you get firemen you get police that's our jumble pack that's a three for one deal dispatcher said i'm required to send everybody if the police try to come in here there's going to be a problem that's what john said the police coming here there's going to be a problem now that's not because john wants to do something to the police, that he wants to hurt the police. He, his patrons, some of them are homeless. Some of them um, may be drug addicts, who knows, right? The, ambul the ambulance workers, they came, they took the man to the hospital. They did not arrest him because they didn't have the cops. The cops did not get involved and they took the man to the hospital. The man was later released. 
Now, it appears that the man may have had a heroin overdose, which is a horrible, horrible thing. But how does handcuffs help him? Because we know that's what the police were going to do, right? If they're going to come in, they're going to search this man. They find some type of controlled substance, start asking him questions, though I don't know how he could have answered those questions, in the state that he was, which was pretty much near death. But that's what they were there to do, and they start looking around. Hey, who are you? What are you doing here? You know, start doing that police work that you know is just to help society. Keith, Keith Vidal, 18-year-old white kid, had some bouts of depression, schizophrenia, was home with his parents, right? And had an outburst. And this has happened with him before. They called the police. He's like, we need help with him. We can't control him. Maybe if you come here, that'll help. He's out of hand. And you know, sometimes you might do that, you know, you know, you do that, and you're thinking, okay, let me call the cops. He hear me call the cops. He'll start calming his ass down. But see, the officers, the policemen, they're not a part of your family. And they are not there to babysit you. When they come on the scene, they're there to make sure the scene is secure. They're there to lock up anyone who may be violent and, and, and deal with any violent person to whatever form of force they feel applicable. So what did they do with Keith Vidal? They came on the scene and they were trying to talk to him and he wasn't wasn't listening. So another officer showed up and said, what are you guys doing wasting all this time talking to this kid? Tase his ass, I gotta go watch the game. So they tased the young man. When that didn't work because he got combative, one of the officers shot him. And Keith, Keith Vidal's dad is grief stricken. And he says, if I would have known that you were going to come into my home and kill my son, I would have took care of it myself. And that's why I'm telling folks, stop calling the police. Because you never know what's going to happen. You never know what extremes they will go to. You never know they're going to jump, make assumptions, react violently to your loved one. That's why officer, I mean, that's why John Lundy didn't want the officers in this place because he don't know what's going to happen. People coming in with guns. Cops are just people prone to overreaction, especially these ones who want to knock heads, bust heads, who want to mix it up, you know? White guy, white kid, 18 years old, dead, gone. I know his father wish he made a different choice. I got another one for you. What about, uh, I just did this story this week. Pearly Golden, 93-year-old woman, out in Hearn, Texas. Got into an argument with her nephew over driving privileges. Got her gun. Would listen to her nephew. Nephew calls, calls the police, hoping police would come help get grandma under control or auntie under control. Auntie doesn't listen, shoots the weapon into the ground a couple times. Officer freaks out, shoots her. Shoots at her three times, kills her. Kills Pearlie, 93 years old, on her own property. Never committed a crime in her life. But that day she got out of line with the wrong officer at her home and that was it. So when these police officers come to your home, you call them, you usher them in. It's like the vampires in the movies we call, you gotta, you gotta welcome the vampire in the house. But these vampires, you don't need to welcome them in. They can come in with a warrant. But they, you gotta have a warrant to come in my home. Unless I'm in a dire emergency. Right? Because I know what can, ex escalations that can happen. But when they come to your home, it's always a possibility they're gonna push your ass right through the prison industrial complex. It's always a possibility they're going to push you right into the cemetery. Get you right for organ harvesting. It's always that possibility. It's not to scare you. These are, the re these are facts. I've looked at these stories after stories for over almost a year now. If you looked at as many stories I, as I have of people calling police out of good, with good intentions only for things that go terribly wrong, you would have a different opinion as well. Now, no one said all police officers, but there are too many police officers who are overstepping their bounds in creating this situation that we have, which is dangerous to the average citizen. 
So I applied John Langley. I applied that restaurant. That heroin addict, he may need treatment, but that treatment does not necessarily come come with jail time. And we need to get off that op, that that mindset. You are brought into the propaganda of the mainstream. And see, that's why I need your support here, because people need to recognize they've been indoctrinated with this idea that cops mean so much well for them. When really it's just a job. It's just a job. And there are people, there are good cops, just like there are good Walmart workers, and there are bad ones. Like there are good doctors and bad doctors. There are good everything and bad everything. And it's just that cops have such a responsibility. And they're being trained to do these things to us. They've been trained when they come on the scene to look for who looks suspicious. They're being trained to profile us. They're being trained to, to, to charge us. They're being also held accountable for not charging you. Let's not forget that. A lot of them have quotas that they must meet arrest numbers that they must maintain or they get shit assignments. It's all documented. Use the internet for more than watching cat videos and stripper poles, twerking videos and following your latest musician. Forget the tabloid stuff. Look at this stuff and I want to I want to give this real information so that you can you can digest it. And this is and you say, "Well, Tim, you know, you doing these videos, what does that help?" Well, you know what? If I tell if if somebody watches this video and they decide this weekend, right, not to call the police on the people upstairs having a party just because the music's a little bit loud, you may have saved somebody's life. You never know. You may, you may, you may somebody who has some weed who might be at that party, not doing anything to anyone, have some weed. You may have just saved them from doing 20 years in jail or 10 years in jail, taking them out of their child's life. For what? Because they were playing music at 1230 and you want to go to sleep because you got to work. Understand? Now, I know it's both ways, but do you get my point? Do you understand where I'm coming from? Do we? You understand? Can we have a connection here on that? So if I'm able to influence that, I've done something. It's not everything. I'm aware of that. I know I haven't done it all. I know that my words aren't everything, but come on, guys. We've got to look at these things and see how we fit in, where we, can, where we can make changes in our own lives. So I hope you take this information and use it. Hats off to the, what is it, the Red and Black Cafe up there in Portland. When I, If I'm ever in Portland, I'm going to stop by. I'm going to grab me a sandwich and a cup of coffee. And I would like for it to be a safe space.